Hello, I'm Won Jung from KAIST. I'm happy to present our work, Hive Mind. Have you ever ridden a long distance bus overnight? Let's say 8 hours? Imagine you feel the air conditioner in the bus is too cold. You also guess that other passengers feel the same. Or, let's say you are a parent, you bring your child and the AC is too strong. And this time, your child sniffles for 8 hours, but you cannot do anything. The AC is supposed to give comfort to passengers, right? But it gives discomfort instead. What brings this irony? First, it's usually the case that passengers have no control of the AC. Second, maybe you are lucky enough to find the control panel of the AC, but you notice that other passengers may not want to increase the temperature. And you find it hard to ask passengers or the bus driver if they will agree. So you end up doing nothing and endure the situation. In many public spaces, the spaces are shared, but not the actuators in the spaces. Are they really public? The three key factors make them not public. 1. Absence of control. 2. Exclusiveness of control. And 3. Social hurdle of control. The irony happens not just for the case of AC in a bus. The same irony happens for lighting fixture, humidifier, public display, speaker, and so on. The opinions of many people are often just ignored. Currently, the person who holds the control interface decides everything. Our vision is direct democracy for public IoT. We want to make IoT actuators in public spaces to be really public. What if the air conditioner in the train is socially controlled and used by passengers in the train? To enable social control and use of the AC, the decision making should be quick and its process should be transparent to the passengers. Also, the procedure of reflecting passengers' opinions should be streamlined and to end. However, social control and use has many challenges. First, diversity and heterogeneity in users, devices, and spaces. Users have different preferences. Devices are made by different vendors. Spaces have different social rules. The three entities are already complex. Further, the interactions among these entities make the problem even more complex and dynamic. Second, these problems are further complicated by the uncertainties in public spaces. We don't know when the visitors come and leave. We don't know if they know each other or strangers to each other. To this end, we built HiveMind, a new system for social control and use in public spaces. It transforms an exclusively controlled actuator to a true public actuator. We use IoT's capability to interconnect participants, actuators, and spaces. In a high level, HiveMind collects the visitors' preferences, mediates them to derive a consensus, and reflects the consensus to the actuators. Our research has the following key contributions. First, we introduced a new problem of social control and use of IoT. The problem has huge implications in mobile IoT computing research, yet underexplored. Second, we suggest the initial architecture for social control and use. The architecture suggests a structure to deal with the complexity of the problem. Third, we design and implement HiveMind, a first-of-a-kind system for democratic control and use of IoT actuators among the public crowd. Our system integrates many technologies into a single coherent system, including IoT interoperability, preference segregation, and influence aware authorization. So far, we have discussed the overview of our work. Now, let's move on to the details. Now, we will see the design and the operation of HiveMind in more detail. First, what are in the picture of HiveMind? There are space admin, IoT enabled actuator, visitors of the space, and their smartphones. The space admin manages the actuator. HiveMind uses the visitors' smartphones as their control interface. To set up HiveMind, the space admin connects the actuators with the control server. Also, auxiliary devices such as beacons and gateways could be installed to support discovery and connection of the actuators. To participate in the social control and use, the visitors need to install the HiveMind app. The app works across different spaces, so the installation is a one-time cost. Let's see a use case for the HiveMind-enabled air conditioner in a bus. In this picture, Patrick enters a bus. HiveMind detects it. The HiveMind app instantly notifies Patrick that he can participate in the control. 
Patrick opens the HiveMind app. As you can see, HiveMind provides the voting UI for controlling the temperature. Here, Patrick selects 26 degree. His preference 26 degree is immediately sent to the control server. HiveMind reflects the Patrick's preference along with other passengers' preferences and updates the consensus. The updated consensus triggers HiveMind to invoke control command. As a result, the AC increases the temperature setting. It makes Patrick more comfortable. Also, Patrick is able to see preferred temperatures of other passengers. This helps Patrick to accept the result, while the final setting is slightly different from his own preference. We saw the example use case of Patrick in a bus. What should we consider to generalize the use case of Patrick to other spaces or other actuators? Social control and use is a very complex problem. The system should mediate dynamic interactions among devices, spaces, and participants. The system should address diverse set of technical issues. Let me name a few. Authorization, control interface design, aggregation policy, and device interoperability. How can we manage the complexity of this unexplored problem? We need a new architecture for social control and use to make the problem more manageable. As an initial attempt, we suggest five-layered architecture. We applied the principle of separation of concerns. We first separate the device communication issues to the device connectivity layer. It currently relies on the existing IoT infrastructure. The next one is participant discovery and authorization layer. It is responsible for managing eligibility to participate in the control. We then separate the issues of real human actions to the social control interaction layer, such as providing a proper control interface. The next one is aggregation and consensus layer. This layer considers the processes of social decision and consensus building. Lastly, the device control layer separates the issues of enforcing the consensus to the devices. Please read our paper for more details. The HiveMind system is organized following the five-layered architecture. In a nutshell, the participant discovery and authorization layer passes authorized user entries to the social control interaction layer. The participants express their preferences using the provided control interface. Next, the individual participant preferences are collected by the aggregation and consensus layer. The layer then computes the consensus value. Lastly, the device control layer invokes control API of the actuator. To realize HiveMind, we should consider a number of aspects. And in this presentation, we will cover three aspects. First is supporting heterogeneous IoT actuators. At this point, the first thing that troubles you may be how to deal with hundreds of different IoT devices from different vendors and different API specifications. As you know, IoT interoperability is a non-big challenge. And in this project, we don't reinvent the wheel. We easily resolve the problem by using the recent achievements from open source communities. HiveMind adopts the unified abstraction of devices from OpenHab, which provides schema-based abstraction of device operations. The right box shows an example schema of air conditioner. Now, device heterogeneity is done, but here comes even more sophisticated challenges. One is influence of air authorization. As I mentioned earlier, public spaces have inherent uncertainties. People visit different public spaces on a short-term basis. It is unpredictable who the visitors are and when they visit. Therefore, HiveMind should allow the visitors to instantly participate in the social control and use. The key question is, to whom should we grant the control? Our answer to this question is to give rights only to those directly affected by the actuator. For example, we can give authorship to those who can hear the music playing from the speaker. We propose influence of air authorization policy, which gives authorship to the visitors in the area of influence or AOI shortly. Now, we need a mechanism to detect whether a visitor is in the AOI or not. While the policy of influence of air authorization is generic to diverse actuators, the actuators require different mechanisms to distinguish users in AOI. We took two different approaches. First is localization-based approximation. Like the air conditioner in the previous example, there are many actuators 
who say you want is aligned to room or wall, such as humidifier or diffuser. HypeMind can authorize the participant based on their room occupancy using the technologies such as VLA beacon or Wi-Fi fingerprinting. The second one is physical influence sensing. This approach directly measures the physical influence of the actuators from participants' smartphones. This would be required for actuators with complex AI. The examples include speakers, public displays, lighting fixtures. Their AI has directionality, decay over distance, and affected by occlusion, reflection, or external noise. Even more difficult, these factors change over time. In this project, we focus on the case of the speaker. Our idea is that if you can hear it, your phone can hear it too. We compute the temporal correlation between source sound and the captured sound of the user's phone. When the correlation score exceeds the threshold, HiveMind regards the user is in the AOI. The advantage of this scheme is that there is no need for space-specific modeling or calibration of the environment. In our accuracy evaluation, it showed a phone score of 0.91 in the lab setting and 0.84 in the real world. Let's move on to utility-based preference segregation. It's difficult to make consensus building happen in public spaces. Visitors change and their preferences also change. They are often strangers to each other, so it is infeasible to encourage interaction among the visitors. And there are many other important issues as well. One is preference elicitation. We want to help users express their preferences easily and precisely. For a case of age temperature, one user may prefer to say, I want 24 degree, while another may prefer just to say it's cold. We also have lots of issues such as transparency of decision making or prevention of trolling. In this project, we focus on the problem of consensus building among strangers in public spaces. HiveMind supports asynchronous and continual voting. In HiveMind, users asynchronously express their preferences using the voting UI. They can also update the preference at any time and they don't have to interact with other visitors. HiveMind computes the consensus as per the aggregation policy. The policy is configured by the space admin in advance. The system continually updates the consensus upon the changes in preferences or periodically. To help users express their preference, we introduce the notion of utility. It quantifies the user satisfaction as a number between 0 and 1. But users will find it burdensome to manually express preferences on all possible states of an actuator. To address this, we use utility function. It estimates utility by taking as input the options selected in the voting UI. The below example shows the voting UI for Patrick in the bus and the utility function for AC temperature. The shape of utility function will be different for different types of actuators. It's important to reflect diverse policies and rules in different spaces. There would be diverse social values in decision-making for device control, such as efficiency, fairness, respect the vulnerable, or first come first serve. Such rules can be computationally included in utility optimization. HiveMind currently provides three primitives for the objective function, efficiency, maximum fairness, and state precedence. We may extend the scheme to support more social values, such as giving more weight to the preference of the elderly or the sick. Let's move on to experiment. We evaluated the system's overhead and usefulness. We will focus on the usefulness in this presentation. We deployed HiveMind to five real-world public spaces, cafeteria, pub, food court, lounge, and office. We installed five types of actuators, TV, speaker, heater, diffuser, and mood light. HiveMind was open to all visitors to the spaces. We published our app on Google Play and installed advertisement flyers in the spaces. The visitors could quickly install the app by just scanning the QR code. We deployed HiveMind for a month and we had total 66 unique users. 33 visitors completed the online survey and 7 took part in the interview. Overall, the users were satisfied with being able to control public actuators. The participants agreed that our authorization policy is fair and reasonable. The users were also satisfied with the aggregation results. Interestingly, they could accept the result even when it differed from their own preferences. 
we share some thoughts and limitations observed. First, in direction of a control. One user complained that it was not unpredictable when his preferred playlist will be eventually played. We may extend the system to provide a time estimation. Second, for the case of a speaker, changing to a playlist with very different mood lowers the satisfaction. We may extend the system to consider semantic similarity between playlists in the preference aggregation. Third, we receive the complaint from an iOS user, as we provide only the Android app, so the user could not access our system at all. One step further, we should consider how to provide the control interface to visitors without a smartphone. Also, we would consider the problem of silent visitors who do not express the preferences explicitly. Let me conclude the presentation. We present HiveMind, a new system for social control and use of IoT in public spaces. HiveMind still has many open questions. A very important question is how to better encode sociality into the system. For example, we may consider respecting for the vulnerable. Also, AI detection needs to be extended to diverse types of actuators. Thank you very much.